I'll make this video quite short. Uh, there's this article in Polygon which talks about Zoe Quinn and how she was quote unquote being harassed on the internet. Now, it also mentions Gamergate, but in a surprising twist, instead of calling Gamergate this, you know, big fucking boogeyman that wants to oppress every fucking woman around the world, well, let me just read this part. Quinn's harassment has been associated with the Gamergate movement, a Twitter hashtag and social campaign defined by most supporters as a call to effect change in video game journalism and to defend the gamer identity. The movement is difficult to define because what is has come to represent has no central leadership or agreed upon manifesto. The hashtag was first used by actor Adam Baldwin in August after immediate details of a professional relationship between Quinn and a video game journalist were posted online, leading to a widespread allegation of creonism, I can't, I can't pronounce that word, between press and developers. Gamergate also has been accused of harassment of women in video games, including Quinn and Ian Sarkeesian and giant space cat head Brianna Wu. Though many Gamergate supporters deny the campaign, should it be blamed? Now, not once has this Polygon article went on and said that how Gamergate is this evil group of people that, once again, want to oppress women. This does not bode well with the likes of Anita Sarkeesian, calling Polygon this Polygon article to be unacceptable and cowardly for not calling Gamergate on what it really is, a misogynistic hate group targeting women. This is fucking classic. This article isn't even in support of Gamergate. In fact, if anything, it's more on neutral grounds. But for some odd reason, it's not enough for Anita Sarkeesian. Anita Sarkeesian must see Gamergate as this oppressive group of people that they are unreasonable, they are not rational, they need to be destroyed, eliminated from this fucking planet. <laughs> it, it's, it, this is basic proof that social justice warriors don't want to see the opposition having a voice in any, in anywhere. You know, may it be in Kotaku, Polygon, ABC, NBC, Fox, anywhere. If they have a voice, then it's all over for them. <laughs> yeah, how dare Polygon, out of all the websites in the world, act completely rational and, you know, at least willing to look at the other side and try to reason with them, to interview them. How dare they? I mean, holy fucking shit. Wasn't it not Movie Bob that said that back when Jack Thompson tried to quote-unquote censor video games, uh, us gamers would try to, to do everything in our power to censor Jack Thompson? <laughs> and at that time, we almost lost. That was according to Movie Bob. Well, they're doing the exact same thing, okay? These social justice warriors are doing the exact same thing. They don't want us, the Gamergators, to have a voice. They don't want us to have any admonition whatsoever, because if we do, then it might threaten them. They fear on what we have to say. So they just scream, shout, try to silence us in every way possible. And that way they don't have to deal with any form of criticism whatsoever. The only group of people that are willing to <laughs> deal with the criticism is the white knights. Those lowly white knights in the fucking bottom of the barrel. Those people like Andrew Norton, um, let's see, Captain Andy, uh, who else? Hobbs Justice. All those fucking pathetic white knights that just masturbate to each other, just in a fucking circle jerking 
circle, whatever. <laughs> Those groups of people are pathetically stupid. And they, they don't even defend their arguments all that well. You know, it's, it's just pathetic. They can't defend uh, Anita Sarkeesian's arguments. They do it so goddamn poorly. <sighs> this is pretty much fucking proof that social justice warriors are irrational and afraid of any form of criticism whatsoever. Afraid to see the opposition as rational. Till then, I am the Atheist Gamer. Peace the game out.